Coming up, I'll be telling you about 13 brand new horror and thriller books that are releasing in August 2022. There are six adult horror books, two young adults, three middle grade, and two thrillers. I'll leave timestamps below in case you want to skip around, but be sure you stick around until the end to see which one of these I picked up for myself, as well as three older titles I just had to have. I'm trying out a new format for these most anticipated videos, so be sure you let me know in the comments what you thought about it. So I went to Barnes & Noble on Friday, August 19th to see which of these I could find in store because it's one thing to show you a graphic of books as I tell you about them, but it's another thing to see the actual book in store, to hold it, and to flip through it. There are some that haven't been released as of the 19th, but I did find all but two that have been released recorded some clips, and have dispersed them throughout the video. I'll start with the adult horror books, followed by young adult, middle grade, and rounding it off with the thrillers. Let me know in the comments which of these you'll be adding to your own TBR. Josephine Thomas has heard every conceivable theory about her mother's disappearance. That she was kidnapped, murdered, that she took on a new identity to start a new family, that she was a witch, this is the most worrying charge because in a world where witches are real, peculiar behavior raises suspicions and a woman, especially a black woman, can find herself on trial for witchcraft. But 14 years have passed since her mother's disappearance and now Jo is finally ready to let go of the past, yet her future is in doubt. The state mandates that all women marry by the age of 30 or enroll in a registry that allows them to be monitored, effectively forfeiting their autonomy. At 28, Jo is ambivalent about marriage. With her ability to control her life on the line, she feels as if she has never understood her mother more. When she's offered the opportunity to honor one last request from her mother's will, Jo leaves her regular life to feel connected to her one last time. Drew Price has a gift, or perhaps a curse. When a demon possesses a person, Drew can see the horrific looking demon that dwells within. This ability has made him a demon hunter, armed with the one weapon that can send these fiends back to hell, the demon dagger. A demon named Nicobar sets its sights on punishing this hunter. It starts by taking the soul of Drew's son, condemning the boy to life as a psychopath. This fast-paced, chilling novel follows Drew's attempt to save his son's soul and then use the blade to end Nicobar's time on Earth. Reluctant Immortals is a historical horror novel that looks at two men of classic literature, Dracula and Mr. Rochester and the two women who survived them, Bertha and Lucy, who are now undead immortals residing in Los Angeles in 1967 when Dracula and Rochester make a shocking return in the height Ashbury district of San Francisco. Combining elements of historical and gothic fiction with a modern perspective in a tale of love and betrayal and coercion, Reluctant Immortals is the lyrical and harrowing journey of two women from classic literature as they bravely claim their own destiny in a man's world. A seasoned invader with multiple home invasions under their belt recounts their dark victories while offering tutelage to a new generation of ambitious home invaders eager to make their mark on the annals of criminal history. From initial canvassing to home entry, the reader is complicit in every strangling and shattered window. The fear is inescapable. Examining the sanctuary of the home and one of the horror genre's most frightening tropes, Anybody Home points the camera lens onto the quiet suburbs and its unsuspecting abodes, any of which are potential stages for an invader ambitious enough to make it the scene of the next big crime sensation. Who knows, their performance just might make it to the silver screen. Amy Foster considers herself lucky. After she left the city and moved to the suburbs, she found her place quickly with neighbors Liz, Jess, and Melissa, 
snarking together from the outskirts of the PTA crowd. One night during their monthly wine get-together, the crew concoct a plan for a clubhouse she shed in Liz's backyard, a space for just them, no spouses or kids allowed. But the night after they christen the she shed, things start to feel off. They didn't expect Liz's little home improvement project to release a demonic force that turns their quiet enclave into something out of a nightmare, and that's before the homeowners association gets wind of it. Even the calmest moms can't justify the strange burn marks, self-moving dolls, and horrible smells surrounding their possessed friend Liz. Together, Amy, Jess, and Melissa must fight the evil spirit to save Liz and the neighborhood before the suburbs go completely to hell. When a ravaged corpse is discovered in Pretoria, South Africa, Esme Snyder, an occult crime expert, is called in to investigate, but she doesn't know the scope of what she's up against. Esme is the target of a cat and mouse game with a serial killer who uses the paranormal to do his bidding with the intent of becoming a god on earth. With assistance from her team, Esme hopes to find the killer before he strikes again, but the clock isn't all that's working against them. The media catches wind of the threat against the citizens of Pretoria, and the reported speculations promise a post apartheid satanic panic. As the body count grows, Esme must figure out who is behind the heinous crimes before she ends up the final sacrifice. After barely making it out of the Kettle Springs cornfields alive, Quinn's first year away at college should be safe and easy. All she wants is to be normal again. But instead, Quinn finds that her past won't leave her alone when she becomes the focus of online conspiracy theories that claim the Kettle Springs Massacre never happened. It's a deranged but relentless fantasy, and there's nothing Quinn can do to get the people to hear the truth, not even on her own campus or in her own dorm room. So when a murderous clown attacks Quinn at a frat party while another goes after her father in Kettle Springs at the same time, Quinn realizes that the facts alone are never going to save her. Her only option is to go back into the cornfields, back where the nightmare began, to set the record straight the only way she knows how. Because when the truth gets lost in the lies, that's when people start to die. Helen Vaughn doesn't know why she and her mother left their ancestral home at Harrowstone Hall, called Harrow, or why they haven't spoken to their extended family since. So when her grandfather dies, she's shocked to learn that he has left everything, the house, the grounds, and the money, to her. The inheritance comes with one condition. She must stay on the grounds of Harrow for one full year, or she'll be left with nothing. There is more at stake than money, for as long as she can remember, Harrow has haunted Helen's dreams, and now those dreams have become a waking nightmare. Helen knows that if she is going to survive the year, she needs to uncover the secrets of Harrow. Why is the house built like a labyrinth? What is digging the holes that appear in the woods each night? And why does the house itself seem to be making her sick? With each twisted revelation, Helen questions what she knows about Harrow, her family, and even herself. She no longer wonders if she wants to leave, but if she can. Parker Nelson can't wait for summer camp. She'll have fun and make amazing memories, far away from the bullies who made seventh grade unbearable. But then something terrible happens. The mean girl who made life a living nightmare is in Parker's cabin. Soon all the other girls turn on Parker too. No one wants to be her friend, except Jenny. Jenny's the only one who is willing to listen. The only one who understands. The only one who feels the same way Parker does. That there's a deep, dark secret to making friends 
and she's the only one who doesn't know it. But there's something else Parker doesn't know. Something bad happened at the camp a long time ago, and it just won't stay buried. Griffin Birch isn't known for being brave, but there's something about the new black slide on the elementary school playground that's made him curious. Against his better judgment, he just has to follow his best friend Layla down. But the black slide is no ordinary piece of playground equipment. What Griffin and Layla find at the other end of this strange portal is a cruel world, populated by bloodthirsty creatures on a quest to become immortal. And it's up to Griffin to save himself, his best friend, and the future of Earth itself. Tori, Marvin, and Noah would rather be anywhere else than on the 7th grade class field trip to Raven Island Prison. Tori would rather be on the soccer field, but her bad grades have benched her until further notice. Marvin would rather be at the first day of a film festival with his best friend Kevin, and Noah isn't looking forward to having to make small talk with his classmates at this new school. But when the three of them stumble upon a dead body in the woods, miss the last ferry back home, and then have to spend the night on Raven Island, they find that they need each other now more than ever. They must work together to uncover a killer, outrun a motley ghost hunting crew, and expose the age-old secrets of the island all before daybreak. Feeling her stardom fading, Struggling soap actress Adele Rafferty is ready to give up on her dreams when she gets a last-minute offer to play the lead in upcoming horror film Final Draft. Could this be her big break? Will she have redemption for what happened the last time she was on a film set? Adele doesn't think twice before signing the dotted line. Adele quickly makes her way to set, deep into the isolated and wintry woods of West Cork, Ireland miles away from civilization and cell service. When real life on set starts to somehow mirror the sinister events portrayed in the script, Adele fears the real horror lies off the page. Isolated and unsure who in the crew she can trust, is there anywhere or any time left to run? When Amaya is invited to Kavi's over-the-top wedding in Sri Lanka, she is surprised and a little hurt to hear from her former best friend after so many years of radio silence. But when Amaya learns that the groom is her very own ex-boyfriend, she is consumed by a single thought. She must stop the wedding from happening, no matter the cost. But as the week-long wedding celebrations begin and rumors about Amaya's past begin to swirl, she can't help but feel like she also has a target on her back. When Kavi goes missing and is presumed dead, all evidence points to Amaya. However, nothing is as it seems, as each wedding guest has their own dark secret and agenda, and Amaya may not be the only one with a plan to keep the bride from getting her happily ever after. As I previously mentioned, I did end up purchasing one of these releases, which I never do, and I also picked up three other titles. I can't get out of Barnes & Noble without purchasing something, and I thought I should at least purchase one of these. Can you guess which one it was? That's going to be Clown in a Cornfield 2, Brenda Lives. I really enjoyed Clown in a Cornfield. I read that last year, gave it four stars, so I had to get this one and see how it progresses. So when I went to Barnes & Noble, I had every intention of not purchasing anything except one book from this list. But after browsing the store for like two hours, I ended up picking up a few other things. So one of those is going to be The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. This is a middle grade uh, short story. It's a novella, whatever you want to call it. It's very popular. I've never read it but Halloween is coming, so it was the perfect time to pick this one up. So as you may or may not know, August is Women in Translation Month, so I picked up two translated works, and the first one is going to be Ring by Koji Suzuki. This is the story that the movie The Ring was based off of. 
I've never read it. I really love this cover. That's probably one of the reasons I picked it up. But yes, love the rain. And the other one I picked up is actually one I already read. I had it and I sold it. And ever since then, I've regretted it. I ended up giving this one three stars initially, but I have not been able to quit thinking about it. And what am I talking about? Tender is the Flesh, of course, by Augustina Basterica. This is an extreme horror story, okay? And some people say it's not all that graphic. There are some graphic scenes though. And I didn't really think it was for me when I first read it, but I have not been able to quit thinking about it. I really regret selling it, so I picked it up again and I'm not gonna read it again anytime soon, but I definitely plan to at some point. So those are all the titles coming out in August that I thought you should know about, as well as all the ones that I picked up at Barnes & Noble in my little mini book haul. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some great recommendations from this video. Please let me know down in the comments below which of these you're adding to your TBR, and I will see you in the next one.